A quick warning before we begin, this video contains some heavy spoilers for the entirety of the trilogy. Seriously, go read it first because I'm about to spoil one of the best twists in all of fantasy. To properly discuss what makes this part of the first Law trilogy so great, we have to go back in time. Ever since Tolkien wrote about Middle-earth and started what we now consider as the fantasy genre, a few tropes from older stories had already carried over. The one I want to focus on in particular is the character of the Mentor. In most fantasy stories, this archetype is pretty easy to find. Often an older character that has some greater knowledge of the world everyone lives in and passes on a crucial piece of wisdom or skill to our protagonist. On the surface, the First Law trilogy doesn't seem to be an exception to this rule. If you've read the books, you know that Bias is anything but the archetypal mentor character. Because First Law is as dark as you can get. Not grimdark into the absurd, but realistic, depressing and gritty, with a world that's unforgiving. The characters are all extremely flawed and morally questionable. Some are just outright monsters, and if you were hoping for a happy ending, well, I shouldn't really ruin the fun for you. Just to give some examples, one of the protagonists is a bloodthirsty northern barbarian who has already massacred hundreds of enemies and innocent people when the books begin. But his savagery is nothing compared to Sand Danglokta, former champion swordsman of the Union, who was captured by the Gurkish army and tortured round the clock for two whole years. They left him a miserable shadow of his former self, crippled and missing half his teeth. At one point, he cynically remarks that Gurkish dentists are the best in the world, and he would know, because during his imprisonment, his teeth weren't just punched out, they were pulled out one by one, leaving those on top where they were gone on the bottom, and vice versa, making him unable to chew any solids. After his release, he became a member of the King's Inquisition, gaining great satisfaction from extracting information using similar methods as inflicted upon him. Yezal is a blue-blooded pretty boy who's infuriatingly arrogant and only seems to care about feeding his ego. He's also completely incompetent and dismissive of those of lower birth even if they have accomplished much more than him. While out of the viewpoint characters, his actions are the least immoral, he's by far the easiest to hate. He does grow over the course of the series, but when push comes to shove, he lacks any backbone to stand up for his people. Pharaoh is an escaped Gurkish slave with a highly damaged psyche and a thirst for revenge that turns her into a merciless killer. She's also part demon, so her senses and physical abilities are inhuman, but she's fully colorblind, which honestly isn't that much of a drawback. Now that you've got a bit of a picture on who this story is about, let's return to the main topic of this video. Bayaz is known as the first of the Magi and had a hand in founding the Union. He has been living in his isolated library in the savage north for the past few centuries. One day, he sends an apprentice to fetch Logan, who's running from old enemies and allies. With the Norsemen by his side, he returns to the kingdom he founded, and the two already start to fit this classic dynamic. After bringing most of the other protagonists together, which only happens at the end of the first book, this series is kind of a slow burn plot-wise, he reveals they must travel beyond the edges of the known world to retrieve a magical artifact that could cause great destruction. After finishing the first book, readers should have already picked up on what kind of world this is and doubt his honesty. This is your absolute final warning. If anything anyone has ever said about First Law has made it seem kind of interesting to you, you should go and read it. As more information comes to light, the true nature of our great mage is revealed. His petty feud with Kalul is the true reason both of them created their own nations. Just like his rival, he doesn't really seem to have a problem with those that break the second law, although he doesn't seem to have done it himself. While the seed is indeed extremely dangerous, he always intended to use it himself to deal a heavy blow to Kahul's army almost going mad with power. He very likely killed his own lover during the siege on the house of the Maker, her father, who was an old and powerful being different from the one that taught Bias and others magic. He did this to preserve secrets about powerful artifacts the Maker had created, and possibly to obscure certain aspects of his master's murder, which was the initial reason all of the students united for this attack. 
We come to see him for what he truly is, a power-hungry egomaniac who uses whole nations to win meaningless rivalries. He has always been controlling the Union from the shadows, through its financial institutions or direct manipulation of the King. He has prevented any grassroots movement or top-down reform that would cause a political shift away from repressive monarchy. This subversion of both the wise mentor and wizard trope is so well done, it speaks to Amber Crombie's incredible understanding of fantasy and how to write an unconventional story. Both Bias and Glockta on their own are enough for me to recommend First Law to anyone.